So I was just, I'm not going to show you how to do any of this, I'm just going to give you a flavour of what we do using tests, as they're called in um, Blackboard, I tend to call them quizzes. Um, and it's for both summative and formative assessment. I use it lots and lots for formative little quizzes at the end of sections during modules and things like that. So the students can go in and monitor their own progress, see how they're getting along. And then we do use it for final summative assessments for exams at the end of the exam week. Um, when we do summative assessments, uh, Carol asked me to mention Respondus, Lockdown Browser. I don't know if any of you know it, but basically it's installed on all the student PCs that will lock down the computer so that they can only access that test at that time. So there's no worry about students going off on the internet and getting questions and answers during it. For the formative, I don't bother with that at all because they will not have it at home, so you will not have them able to just get it anywhere. Not where it is on. So I tend to use question polls, and this is basically a section. You can give it any name you want. How you arrange it is entirely up to you. Um, for this example, this is a first year biology module where we do health and safety and scientific numeracy. <coughs> the census was 10% of the marks at the very end. So it's sectioned. I tend to put all the questions in a single pool, and that pool now is up to over 1,500 questions. From those pools, you can basically make multiple tests using any of the questions you select or question sets. When we do it, from the machine's point of view, we deploy a test, so you create a test. We deploy it so that it's sectioned and they have to complete one section before they move on to the next. So you can see the progress of learning from the students. They're not trying things that are too difficult for them at that point. And there's ways in Blackboard to kind of hide things and make it pretty for the students so it's nice and clear for them exactly what they've got to do. In any one section, what we've done in this case is we give a set PowerPoint slides or a PDF, giving them all the information, they work through that, they practice. Um, I have a practice quiz, which is giving lots of feedback. Every question has feedback. It tends to be only negative feedback, so if they get an incorrect answer, it tells them an indication of why they got it wrong or what they need to think about. We also have a mandatory test they must do, which releases the next section. So it allows them to know the progress. This is brand new first year students. So we find this is very good to allow them to know and progress themselves. It also allows us to immediately through Grade Centre to monitor progress. And if anyone's not done it, you can immediately just shoot an email to them to say, any problems come and see me or you should be further on. Um, the question sets can be set up. So you can deliver, so this example's got 10 questions to the student. It will pull one question out of a set I've set of 10 questions. So every student, every time they do it, will get a slightly different test. It's probing the same learning outcome and the same ability, but the questions are all different. It's designed that way so the students, every time they do it, they get a different set. But they're doing practice over and over again, and I encourage them to do it over and over again. Because every time they do it, they'll get a slightly different question. Again, this is just a formative assessment. It allows me to progress. Um, this is just uh, showing you the, an example question. Here's the kind of thing given the incorrect feedback. So if you put an incorrect answer in, this is what it would tell you. Either give them the answer or give them a point sort of why it may be wrong. You can do that on a multiple choice. You can do that on an option by option basis. So if you put one option, you can feed directly from why that is incorrect. So you can give quite good instant feedback directed exactly to the question and the answer they are put on. You can also do positive feedback if you give a correct answer, why that is correct, because some of them just tick. Um, there's a lot of annotations, well, there's several annotations and there's several ways of doing it within questions within Blackboard. And these are really powerful for as you go forward so that you can reuse question sets. You don't have to do questions every time. Even going up to different levels, you can bring some questions in. If you annotate them in a clever way, you can quickly identify the questions you're wanting. So it does take a little bit of forethought into how you want to design it, either topics or levels of difficulty, things like that. Um, this is the four options you get. So we can do categories or we can do a topic, like for physiology, either cardiovascular, respiratory, etc., etc. You can also do levels of difficulty, so you can do, it's free text, all of these, you can put in whatever you want to categorize it. You can do easy, easy, medium, hard. If you're wanting to tell the difference between an A plus and an A, you might have a few hard questions in there that are really 
probing that student's knowledge and understanding. And again, you can build your tests quite quickly if you've got them in with the question pool. So there is an upfront effort to put the questions in and make sure they work properly. Once you've done it once, it's very quick to deploy new tests. Um, yeah, that's levels of difficulty. Okay, so you know, that's great. Yeah.